views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Welcome to Angel Healing House Radio. My name is Claire Candy Hoff. Through my business, Angel Healing House, which can be found at angelhealinghouse.com. I'm a writer and an author, an international radio host, a Reiki master teacher, and an angel practitioner. My inspirational books entitled Angels of Faith and One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness and my autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, are based on my recollections of our life in spirit, and they help us to remember our divine, eternal natures. Through Angel Healing House, I help people to let go of sadness, anger, bitterness, resentment, and regret that has kept them locked in the prison of the past, and I help them to let go of worry, stress, and control which has kept them focused on an imagined future. And once they are no longer living in the past or the future, they can start to live in the present moment, which is the only place that they can experience synchronicities, miracles, and magic. As an angel practitioner, I help people to see their lives from a higher perspective with the help of an extraordinary group of angels who call themselves the Posse of Angels. Just like my angelic family, the Posse of Angels, I'm very excited to take some of your calls for that free angel advice. You can call into the show on 1-800-930-2819. But before we get to those callers, welcome everyone to Angel Healing House Radio with me, Claire Candy Hoff, and With it being August, welcome to a brand new month. Tomorrow marks a very powerful day. With it being the 8th of August, or some people call it the 8-8. For this heralds a cosmic event. It's actually a planetary alignment known as the Lion's Gate Portal or a stargate, which opens a portal of energy. You know, many feel this massive shift in frequency as a wave of accelerated energy hurtles through this open vortex, which aids those of us on planet Earth in furthering our spiritual opening, enlightenment, and awakening. In addition to advancing our enlightenment, It acts like a catapult for change in our lives. You know, many people say that this acceleration and burst of energy activates new light codes for humanity to raise and increase love and light on the planet. Even though many of us have cleared, we've cleansed, we've healed so much of ourselves For those who are empaths and sensitives, it is important at this time of 8-8 to spend time in nature, helping us to ground and assimilate these powerful surging energies. Now, numerologically, the number 8 represents power and strength and wisdom, divine connection and rebirth. And when the eight is doubled on the eight, eight, these energies increase significantly. Please remember that in order for things like wisdom and rebirth and balance to be experienced, there may be many disclosures which are revealed both personal in our personal lives and in our world. These need to be revealed in order for 
the old to be disclosed and the new to be reborn. So try your best to overcome this by rising above it, seeing it from a higher perspective of awareness and consciousness raising on the planet and do stay in your radiant light. With so much lion and sun energy at this time, we want to make it, we want to be as clear and balanced and open to receive high energy and light. So focus on clearing away darkness and toxic energy and strengthening and empowering yourself to remain confident, fully aligned with your full spiritual potential. And with it being a new month comes a brand new theme of topics for Angel Healing House radio shows. And today's no exception because we're going to launch straight into this month with the keys to spiritual knowledge. Now, the posse of angels wishes for us to know that although we may not have realized it, each and every one of us on the planet has been in a marathon. Unbeknownst to many was that this marathon of increasing love and light on the planet has been going on for eons of time. Now, they want to make it very clear that not all of us hopped on board the train of ascension at the same time as everyone's awakening to their higher purpose came to them in divine timing. Now, during that time, the New Age movement sprang up and it saw volumes of information and books on every aspect of spiritual knowledge. In fact, it seemed like the metaphysical New Age section of bookstores like Barnes and & Noble and, now, and the now defunct Borders. Remember Borders bookstores? <laughs> well, their New Age sections kept expanding and growing even larger with each year. Topics that were red hot were books on quantum physics, the importance of energy, living in the present moment, books on the laws of attraction, and the one that was closest to my heart was all of those books that came out about angels. You know, with the arrival of personal computers, this spiritual knowledge was made available to many more people on the planet. And the wisdom was often delivered to us in, uh, in websites that we would click on to receive inspirational daily quotes. Now, these quotes didn't really teach us anything new, as this spiritual knowledge has been around and uh, since time began and seeded in our souls. But these quotes helped us to reconnect with our ancient wisdom and were just as relevant in today's world as the information was back in times gone by. So let's look at some of these quotes. Okay, for instance, Aristotle said, happiness depends upon ourselves. What a clever man. This was relevant when Aristotle lived in 384 to 322 B.C., and it's just as relevant today. For happiness is not when something will happen. Happiness is a choice. Happiness is now for happiness's sake. You know, whether we choose to make being happy dependent on something external by hanging our joy on an expectation on something happening or someone doing something, well, it's all just a matter of our free will and the perception that we choose to believe. Now let's go to a, another very learned fellow, Jesus. Jesus said, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. By the way, the posse of angels are saying that people do not receive when they pray because they are not open to receive. Most time, people spend much of their effort in putting their focus on lack, on things that they do not have, or why things will not work out for them. With energy and focus on lack and scarcity, it takes us away from being grateful what we have already been blessed with, 
which then just makes us even more closed down to receiving. Okay, Buddha added his spiritual wisdom when he said, all that we are is the result of what we have thought. The mind is everything. What we think, we become. Now, all three of these wise men emphasized that the kingdom of God, heaven, which is our bliss, our peace, our love, our joy, our harmony, unity, all of these things can be found within. And for us to look no further than to our divine eternal natures within all of us. Okay, that sounds simple enough. This idea and subject of the importance of putting all of our focus and attention on staying in that divine presence, well, in the last 20, 30, 40 years, it took on a life of its own. This tidal wave of books about quantum physics, the laws of cause and effect, and the importance and power of the energies, it flooded the collective consciousness. Once this concept was understood, it was paramount to live solely in the present moment, or as I would like to call it, the nanosecond of the now, to access this unlimited, powerful energy available to all. Let's go back to Buddha. Buddha also said, do not dwell in the past. Do not dream of the future. Concentrate the mind on the present moment. By doing so, Whatever you desire must manifest, but only if your energies are a direct match with the high frequency energies of the universe and if we drop all expectation and are open to receive in God's way. Now, in my previous radio programs uh, about how to connect with angels, we spoke about ways in which we can increase our energetic frequency to be aligned with the high energy frequency of the universe. And by the way, you can listen to all of my archive shows by going to my host page on on the Transform. Transformation Talk Radio site, um, and there you can click on all the various topics and listen to them any day and any time you wish. Now, another very clever, wise fellow was Henry David Thoreau. He said, if any man will hold a picture in his mind of doing what he wants to do and will sustain that mental picture, The God power within will develop it and bring it to pass. Richard Wiseman added, Luck is not a magical ability or a gift from the gods. Instead, it's a way of thinking and behaving. If luck, he he goes on to say, if luck means being in the right place at the right time, being in the right place at the right time is actually all about being in the right state of energy or the right state of vibration. And probably Henry Ford said it most succinctly, whether you think you can or think you can't, either way you're right. So once we have firstly connected with our divine within, meaning our limitless and unbounded potential, and then harnessed all of our energies, and we're choosing to live solely in the present moment, we then can access our enormous power of imagination and our wealth of creativity. You know, everyone, people live quiet lives of desperation and worry and stress, not because of their circumstances that they have created through their lack of faith and lowered vibrational frequencies, but because they choose to minimize the importance of their dreams and they constrict their wishes, which greatly diminishes the miraculous potential and quality of our lives. Joseph Murphy said, the law is that whatever you imagine and feel to be true sinks into your subconscious mind, which in turn brings it to pass. 
Albert Einstein agreed with him and by saying imagination is more important than knowledge. And the posse of angels are reminding all of us that the subconscious cannot tell the difference between reality and fantasy. So you might as well dream very big and dream often. I love this quote by Neil Donald Walsh, which sums all of this up best. Every prayer, every thought, every statement, every feeling that we make and we have is creative. In fact, you were created to create, not to react. Creation is the highest form of divinity and it's your birthright. Truth is, you are creating all the time. The central question in our lives is whether we are doing this, whether we're creating our lives consciously or unconsciously. And the posse of angels is saying that the majority of people do create their lives unconsciously by reacting to things that they do not want which, surprise, surprise, brings them more of what they do not want. You know, on one of my previous radio programs, I asked my listeners to think back, think back over the past year. You can do it. Think back over the past year about how much time you spent on social media and perhaps writing posts that focused on things that you did not like, on posts that, uh, that you were judging things. All of this was energy that was put into the collective on earth of what many did not want and what they were upset about, what they were angry about, what they thought was injustice. And we can justify and we can rationalize all we want as to why we are spending time posting against something that we did not want. But you know what? The universe doesn't know justification. It certainly doesn't know rationalization. It just knows to bring us more of whatever energy we choose to focus on and give our attention to. You know, the more I investigated these spiritual quotes, and I can tell you I read hundreds and hundreds of them, although they were often presented in unique ways, the clear majority of all of these quotes and the spiritual knowledge contained within them, they fell into, and I was surprised, they fell into only three categories. The first category, the first spiritual wisdom to live by is to seek the kingdom of God within. All answers lie within. And we do not have to look to any group, any organization, anything else outside of ourselves for the answers. You know, I actually have written this on the back of my brochure. I say... Um, Okay, here it is. If, okay, I've often stated that I do not teach anyone anything as we all incarnate a spirit into physical form with all the knowledge and the wisdom inside of ourselves that we will ever need. I lovingly help clients to reconnect to this wisdom, which is their divine eternal nature in order for them to remember their magnificence, their beauty, and their power. I actually state that on my, on my brochure, that I don't teach anyone anything. You, we all have this magnificence inside of us and this access, if only we'd allow ourselves to access this spiritual wisdom and knowledge. So seek that divine nature of ours within for any answers we need. The second spiritual nature is to stay in the present moment 
the nanosecond of the now, because that's where all the synchronicities, that's where all the miracles, and that's where all the magic happens. I've said many times on my radio shows that we plead and we beg and we cry. We ask God and the angels to send us signs, but we keep living in the past or worrying about the future and we miss out on the signs that God sends us that can only be accessed in the present moment. And the third category that these quotes fell into, utilize your vast wealth of imagination and creativity that is your divine inherent birthright. Serve the divine inside of you by creating and then bring it forth to share it with the planet. You know, everyone, most people stop themselves from utilizing their imagination and their grand creativity because they keep measuring themselves by outside standards. They keep thinking that they have competition. And they forget that each one of us was made in the reflection of that God source. Each one of of us is a unique and special vibrational frequency. And, uh, And we forget about our uniqueness and our ability to freely, with our pure potential, co-create our realities with God's source. You know, everyone, but just intellectually knowing these three points is not enough. To access this wisdom, one must be prepared to spend time on a daily practice of quiet reflection in silence in order to connect to this inner wisdom. With this newfound clarity, our perceptions change, which then, because of the laws of cause and effect, the seemingly unbelievable starts to manifest in front of our eyes. This is because we start practicing what I call the law of allowance, allowing God and the angels to create limitless ways to fulfill our intentions and our wishes. You know, Some would say that miracles start to manifest. I, for one, have seen many miracles because of living life according to these three major areas of spiritual knowledge. In addition, Neil Donald Walsh shares that miracles seldom occur in the lives of those who do not consider them possible. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Perhaps manifestation then is just a matter of, I'll see it when I believe it, rather than the adage of, I'll believe it when I see it. By truly living and practicing these spiritual truths, we are then able to tap into our pure potential. As we choose to be the reflection of that pure potential, then we are open to receive Miracles, because miracles are just unlimited pure potential made manifest on the physical plane. And with all of this spiritual knowledge in the world, we are still human and we live in a physical realm. That is why it's so important for us to take and to make inspired action towards our dreams, because spiritual knowledge for spiritual knowledge's sake, will stay that way in the etheric without our energies behind it to give it form, to give it movement and the ability to manifest in the physical. And as confirmation, you know, when I was shuffling my animal cards for an additional message to come out for us, in crawled spider. Hello, Mrs. Spider. I I think it's Mrs. Spider. Um, Spider is such a wonderful animal totem. So Spider's message for us is to be a creator of prosperity. We will support ourselves both financially and spiritually by bringing forth the creativity that's been seeded in our soul. This is our gifts, our talents, our abilities. And when we get that intuitive nudge, that instinct within us to create, do not 
second guess why, just create, because it's in that creation that then we will um, create our realities to support us doing what we love doing. Creativity can be found absolutely everywhere. And Spider reminds all of us to create for creation's sake. Don't create for the money. Don't create for the fame. Don't create for the sex success. I've done radio programs before where um, I've said we are successful already because we are that reflection, shining source of God. Um, so don't create for any of those. You create because you are have a divine eternal nature and your creative expression is a very important puzzle piece for the planet for you to serve the divine within yourself and then to serve others so um therefore you create because it will create a magical priceless tapestry that will actually catch abundance in your web you know like spider be diligent to your craft and appreciative of all the blessings, all the things that get caught in your web. Weave your passions with enthusiasm, with playfulness, and with fun. And, you know, at the end of the day, what I often say to God and the angels is thank you for this day. Thank you for showing me, sending me signs on how I can best serve and, and when I get up in the morning, I say, show me how to best serve. In this way, I let go of trying to figure life out. I set my intentions of having fun and playing and being creative. And then I allow God and the angels to work out the how and the when of my life working out. Because... They can see much further down the track. They, they have this enormous scope to be able to bring me the life and the fulfillment of my prayers and um, in their limitless, unbounded way. And uh, all I have to do is that faithful servant is just show up in happiness, in creativity, in abundance, um, and just step forward when that intuitive nudge, that gut feeling, my instinct tells me to move forward. So you have been listening to me, Claire Candy Hoff on Angel Healing House Radio. When we return from this short break, we are going to be taking some of your calls for those free angel readings. So remember that Angel Healing House airs every week, and that's Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on here on Transformation Talk Radio. And uh, like I said, when we come back from the break, we'll be taking some of your calls. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. Have you discovered the remarkable books at angelhealinghouse.com? Author Claire Candy Hoff has channeled rare books of inspiration and insight. Angels of Faith is an inspiring story of healing, comfort, and hope that reminds us that death is not to be feared, but embraced with joy. One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness takes readers on a roller coaster ride through Angel Ariel's five most important lives on Earth, as well as her experiences in the afterlife, and helps us remember our own journey across the veil. And Claire Candy's autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, which details the 2003 soul exchange that took place when Claire Candy walked out of her body and Angel Ariel walked in, creating heaven on Earth for herself and others. To find out more about these wonderful books, visit angelhealinghouse.com today. Hello, 
everyone. You're back with me, Claire Candy Huff on Angel Healing House Radio. We've been speaking about, if you've just joined us, we've been speaking about the powerful Lionsgate energies, the 8-8, which uh, opened up, uh, which are opening up tomorrow. We've been feeling the wave of acceleration as this huge portal of energy is opening up to advance us along our spiritual path and help to reveal and disclose anything that is not of the light, uh, that is not of love, in order for it to be seen, revealed, so that we can uh, deal with it and then get uh, beyond it for the rebirth of our planet. Let's go to our phone lines. Uh, We have our first caller. We have David, David from California. You're on the line with Claire Candy Hoff. How are you today? Good. How are you? Can you hear me? Uh, Yes, I can. I can hear you very well. How are you today? (laughs) I'm good. How are you? I'm really, really well. So how are you feeling uh, with everything that's been going on energy-wise? I've actually been feeling really good. It just feels like a lot of new things are starting to come forward and transpire. So that's why I called in. Yeah, yeah. It's it's amazing how... um, you know, I've I've spoken about it often, and I've called. I've, I've said that those of us that are creating our lives consciously, uh, we don't. We may not know it, but we've been on a marathon, and uh, and it seems like you know. <laughs> The more you look back, the more you look back over your life, you can see just how much we've cleared and cleansed and healed and, and you know, uh, and released judgment and allowed others to walk their path and, you know, not get caught up in draining our energies through, uh, like I said, judgment or, uh, or criticism or things like that. And, uh, and and we what well, we didn't know it at the time, but what we were doing is we were clearing a path to create a very different reality for ourselves. Yeah, I like the idea too. Like you, you just talked about in your intro that we've been on this marathon, <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of us are very tired. If I'm, I'm telling you, yes, to, very. Yeah, and um, and uh, you know um, a lot of. Uh, uh, April and May's energies, even going back to March, you know, was this feeling of this slowing down, um, like we were very tired and we were very weary. Um, you know, maybe some things in our life, which we have done for a while, uh, we, we know that, you know, it feels like they're coming to an end, but the new hasn't shown up for us yet. So it's a, it's a remarkable time for us to take that time out and rest um, and, you know, for, you know, to go into, well, not like the dark night of the soul that we've been in before, but take time out to reflect on just how far we've come and also uh, to, to nourish and nurture ourselves. Because when we start, we didn't do all of this stuff in the last three, four, five, ten years or whatever, or more, um, in order for it not to go anywhere. The books that we've written, the screenplays that we've done, the the radio shows, the, the talks, the seminars, the workshops, they've all been like stepping stones to take us where we are now. Um, and they're saying specifically for you, for you, David, that um, all of this is... Ha- has created this amazing foundation for you. Um, uh, and uh, what this foundation is, it's a, it's a great strength to stand on because you are going to be very busy soon and you will look back and you'll look back at this time where seemingly nothing was happening um, and you, you will wish that you took more time out to rest and to really nurture your soul. So... That's what they're uh, that's what they're alluding to. So I don't know. Does that resonate with you? Yeah, it's it's interesting because I did I had this question that was kind of resonating with me for the past two days, which is why am I here? <laughs> because one of the things that came forward 
was finishing off. I had recently finished off a soccer season as a coach, and I feel this need to now take it to another level and coach girls for club soccer. All right. And that, you know, entails going back to school for, mm-hmm. well, not school, but, you know, like on-field training for the next level of coaching. And I was like, right. really? Is that what I'm doing? <laughs> like, it's crazy. Well, yeah. you know what? Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people think that uh, you know when. How can I serve the world? They, you know, think of themselves perhaps as metaphysical teachers or spiritual teachers or the. But when it when it really comes to serving serving the world, we can do it in limitless forms and one of the ways that you're doing it through teaching young girls soccer and they're saying this is that you will never see the enormous impact that your teaching has on these girls and I'm just getting shivers all over Um, you teach them life's lessons you teach them to be independent you teach them to rely on themselves to rely on their instincts um, to be confident to be powerful women to and, and these are these are invaluable eternal verities that when you really look at them they're just absolutely priceless what you're teaching them mm. and and in in most cases the posse of angels was are saying that you will not you will not see the full impact because many of these girls when they grow up to be teenagers um and they start dating um maybe they they'll be faced with a situation in which they find themselves in and they'll remember their soccer teacher's words listen to your instinct mm. you know on on where to move on what 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 car not to get into or, or an energy of, you know, uh, of picking up energies with, with other people. Um, when they get to be uh, young women, they, when they get to, you know, choosing their life's partners, most of the time when we are doing this work um, uh, and being of service and doing our purpose, whatever, you know, uh, whatever uh, God and the angels brings to us to serve best, we never, we never see the full breadth of uh, of how what we are doing makes a difference in the world. But they are telling you, David, mm. they are telling you uh, very succinctly that you are making a, such an enormous difference, not only in the lives of these girls, but in the lives of their parents. And then from each one of these girls, the spokes will go out and then they'll touch and turn on the lights of other people out there. Um, it's just enormous what you are doing. And believe me, if you were not meant, I mean, the posse of angels are nodding their head, yes, do the certification or, or, or get the accreditation that you need or whatever, because it, it's a step up for you. They're saying in, yeah. in uh, many different ways, they're showing like it's a stepping stone. Um, and they're saying, believe us, David, we can't interfere with your free will. But if you were not supposed to be doing this, uh, we would in many sneaky ways shut you down <laughs> or take you out <laughs> so that you would, right. be, you know, you would be um, forced or uh, not really forced, but you would be cajoled to go in into a different direction to, to serve. Right. So. Um, uh, I'm just, I, I just feel just an overwhelming sense of pride from the angels to you, uh, because of how you stepped up. Um, and, uh, they're saying, if you do have a fault, it's that you don't give yourself enough credit for what you do. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is a true statement. Yeah. So they're true. saying, take time. <laughs> Take time to really, you know, pat yourself on the back and give yourself credit for all that you've transmuted and transcended. And, and, uh, and all you are now is just that unconditional love and, um, and, and forgiveness and, 
and allowing other people to live their lives, um, which is enormous. Great. Which is really enormous. And any specific questions? Otherwise, I'll go to the cards. Um, I guess the only specific question is, uh, it's been, I'm kind of ready for a long-term relationship. Okay. So All right. I'm going to put that out there. I don't know who that is, with, but... Okay, they know who that is. <laughs> Believe me, you yeah. don't have to know. You don't have to know know, know who that is. You know, um, I often okay. I often think back to. Oh, hold on, that that card jumped out. I'm not going to use that card. Um, I often think back to when I met Pete, and you know, I put down in the decree. I've often spoken this, uh, spoken about it, and written uh, this in my books. How I wrote a decree okay. six months before I met him, and um, I I didn't put down any physical attributes, you know, you know, that tall, dark, handsome, whatever. Um, I, you know, I really centered on, you know, we work together, we allow each other to be who we are, we travel the world together with each other's best friends. And when he turned up, to this day, when I look at him, I get all googie eyed and I'm gobsmacked. And I think to myself, the angels know us better than we know ourselves. Right. They just do. Yeah. And so you say, thank you. I'm open to receive the most divine beloved relationship right now. And, and just, and just leave it at that and then see where inspired action will take you. And when I was shuffling the highest, uh, emotionally, um, happy card in the deck came out, which is the 10 of cups. I mean, mm. this, this, this is that card that's uh, saying to you before now, uh, you weren't re really receive love in your life. And maybe to look back on the relationships that you did bring to your life, that you did draw to yourself, which, you know, uh, in some aspects, they might have been wonderful, but mm, didn't quite tick all the boxes. Might have been a bit of a compromise. You know, they might have been right. physically physically gorgeous. They might have been a bit insensitive. They might have been very sensitive and gorgeous, but they were not spiritually um, on the same wavelength as you are. You know, but now you're open to receive this. And so I can't wait to see what steps in. <laughs> the next card. <laughs> Neither can I. <laughs> the next card is the spring, is the uh, queen of wands and um this is e this is even more confirmation that your queen is coming i do get the i uh, i do get the impression or the hit that um it w it might even come through stepping up uh in the world of soccer through the through these new connections through this new certification through the people that you're going to meet and uh, and and these you know these new opportunities or these new connections that are coming towards you, oh they're saying David keep your eyes open okay <laughs> and the next card that's coming out for you in regard to this new love that is coming to you is the death card it's it's the beginning you know it's the finally putting to rest any illusions around love that you had before that perhaps you were not worthy or not deserving that you didn't weren't valuing yourself to be a value for somebody else but all that is transforming now um as you're allowing for a new a new love to come in so i'm very excited for you thank you you're very, very I am too. <laughs> I am too. So please do keep us informed. Call back into Angel Healing House Radio. And um, I want an invitation to the nuptials. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> All right. I'm wishing you a lot of love. Take care of yourself. You too. Have a blessed day. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, David, for calling in. And... Uh, and isn't that exciting? That's very exciting. Uh, you know, when I think back about so many of us um, walking this path for so many years, we were walking to get back to who we are. We were walking back to connect with 
the love of who we are. And now, having cleared and cleansed and healed so much, we are going to be drawing to ourselves that worthy love because we are worthy to ourselves now. Let's go to our next caller. We have Lisa. Lisa calling in. Lisa, how are you today? Hello, Candy. I'm very well. How are you? It's lovely to hear your voice. How have you been? It is. I've been really, I've been doing very well. I'm really excited to be on your show today. And I'm so glad that uh, I got a call through to you. Isn't that, to be isn't open that? To hear what the Posse of Angels have to say. Now, what's, what's been going on in, in your world? How have you been affected by these current energies? I feel like I have used them to help me clear out. I've done a lot of clearing out of my life and myself. And I feel like I've created a lot of open space that I'm ready to fill with abundance and love and just really good people, places, and things. And I, I'm mm. really excited to begin that process. Isn't, that's wonderful. And uh, the Posse of Angels are um, humming, humming the word creativity, creativity over and over and over in my ear. They are saying that you are one of those people that hopped on board and just like a like a dog on a bone have uh, have brought forth uh, and opened up your creative expression. They're showing me. Uh, they're showing me you cre- you working at your craft. Um, uh, they're showing me the glass. They're showing me glass. The glass works, and they're saying that when you're doing this, you know, it's like you lose all track of time. Yeah, the the divine channels through you, and this vibrational frequency that you hold when you're doing this, you're remembering a time where you've done this before, and it's it just brings you so much joy. But not only brings you joy, it brings the whole planet joy. But not only that, they're also pointing to your writing, um, writing a writing a book, and they're saying. Uh, the um, the craft would have been enough, but then you added, you know, the craft of writing. So it's the the craft work and the glass, you know, that gave you great joy. But then you birthed, you birthed the writing, and then out of that, there are going to be so many miracles that come about. Um, Take time out before you get very, very busy because you will get busy, they're saying. Take time out to really give yourself credit for what you have transmuted and transformed these past years. Um, there's, I, they're saying, it's interesting that David called in and that you call in because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm picking up the same energies that both of you don't give yourselves enough credit for the things that you actually healed, cleared, and transmuted. Got it. Got okay. It. So really take some time out and and just pat yourself on the back, you know, give yourself a vote of confidence and uh, and take time out to look at the path You know, look at the path that you've been on to bring you to this really important moment. I mean, you know, sort of we're um, a little bit further along at the halfway point of the year. And uh, and Mm -hmm. as we go, as we go into those fall months, um, you know, a a lot of the times the Posse of Angels have mentioned that it's going to be showtime for many of us to be able to showcase our works showcase, uh, you know, the message and, uh, they're saying, Lisa, okay. They're not, they're now like being a parent. They're not wagging their finger at you, but they're saying, Lisa, okay. Um, don't drop back into fear and don't drop back into who am I to be the voice to deliver this message. They want you to know that what okay. they've been what they've been grooming you for is to just be the voice of God. I don't know if you've ever done any okay. work with I don't know if you've ever done any work with Metatron. 
Metatron is the angel, the voice of God. Uh, this, if you uh, read about Metatron and if you invoke Metatron into your, either your meditations or your, or your daily ritual or the things that you do, this will help you. I'm just getting shivers all over. This will help you to stand in your truth and just show up and be the divine messenger. This is a really it's exciting. It's very exciting. Very, very exciting. And they'll say, you know, when you're ready, they're saying there's no other thing that you, and no other certification, no other thing that you have to read or you have to attend a workshop or anything. There's nothing more that you have to do that was more important than you transmuting and transforming all of those things that you brought to yourself in this lifetime, transmuting them back to unconditional love and forgiveness and non-judgment. And so now all you need to do is just to be the voice, that voice of the divine. And it just feels so, so beautiful. Um, the, fe the feeling that I'm picking up, let's go to the cards and see what comes out. I bet you didn't oh. expect that. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. Wow. Wow. There's, 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 there feels something very sacred about it. Okay. The first card is the, um, is the uh, page of wands. Now, this page is uh, the, one in, the one out of all the wands that is the most fiery, that is the most inspirational. He takes that <laughs> inspired action. So they're saying, when... When the signs are given to you how to step forward and to be of best service um, and to deliver the message, you can deliver it with uh, great confidence, knowing that, um, uh, you know, um, you wouldn't be asked to deliver the message unless you were ready. Okay. I like unless that unless you were ready. Um, the next card that's coming in for you, oh, I love this card. The card is the star card. They're saying that mm. your wishes are coming true. They are coming true. They want you also, like David, to know that there is a beloved on the horizon for you. That's awesome. And all you need to do is wow. just open up your heart to receive this beloved that will help you to deliver these wonderful sacred messages in your own beautiful creative form. And, uh, and the next card is the travel card. This is the Knight of Wands. Uh, this is the movement card. And you will experience movement in your life in both relationship-wise and also in your work and opportunity or business areas. It's all there on the etheric. It's They're all just connecting dots. And uh, they're saying, you more than deserve it, beloved Lisa. So I hope that's been helpful for you. Thank you. That's beautiful. My heart feels so full. Thank oh, you. I'm so glad. Thank you so much for calling in. I'm sending you so much love. Take care. You're welcome. I'm receiving it and sending it back, Candy. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And that just about wraps the show up for today. Thank you so much to my callers. Thank you to everyone who's listening and recommending the show. Remember that Angel Healing House Radio airs every week on Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time here on Transformation Talk Radio. And if you would like to find out more about my amazing, remarkable channeled books, One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, which is the sequel to One True Home. This book is my autobiography, as I had my angelic walk-in experience in 2003. And this delightful book, Angels of Faith, based on my two near-death experiences. Please go to my website, which is angelhealinghouse.com. Dot com. And remember, everyone, to go out and fashion an absolutely unbelievable, beautiful life to yourself this week. And I look so forward to speaking with you again next week. Love and angel blessings to you all. Take care. Bye. Mm -hmm.